Welcome! In this presentation, we will be presenting the results of our experiment to determine the bromide-facilitated fluorescence quenching of quinine through UV spectroscopy. In our experiment, we observed the quenching of the quinine dication by bromide ions in solutions of varying ionic strengths. We measured the fluorescence of four sets of solutions, each set with a different nitric acid concentration and each set containing four different concentrations of bromide quencher. All 16 solutions contain the same concentration of quinine. After analyzing the spectra of each set of solutions, we found that as ionic strength increased, quenching rate decreased. We also found that as quencher concentration increased, quenching rate increased as well. All of this is indicative of a dynamic quenching process. Furthermore, through the plotting of the stern volmer equation and the determination of rate constants, we were able to plot the Debye-Huckel equation and verify that the extended Debye-Huckel model applies to this experiment. Since the two apparatus available for use in this experiment emit light at different wavelengths, they give different readings for the same sample. Quinine absorbs in the UV range, and since we utilized the 365 nanometer LED to excite the molecules, our signals were very strong compared to the other apparatus. Since the peak intensity versus baseline noise was very large, the signal-to-noise ratio was negligible in our system. To normalize the fluorescence intensity of our samples, the spectrometer was set to take three scans each over one second for all samples. We then obtained a reading for pure water and set that as a blink in the Ocean Optics Spectra Suite program. We made sure to exclude all room light contamination by placing a box over the apparatus. For every subsequent reading, the program automatically subtracted the blink. The spectra were then analyzed. The intensities over a 4 nanometer peak range, 484 to 488 nanometers, gave us the fluorescence intensity value for each solution. Here are the results of our measurements describing the effects of ionic strength and quencher concentration on fluorescence intensity and our calculations of the resulting kinetic quenching rate constants. Some general trends that we observed. As ionic strength increased, the stern volmer rate constant decreased. As ionic strength increased, fluorescence intensity increased as well. Here's the figure overlaying the four spectra acquired at the lowest ionic strength. As quencher concentration increased, fluorescence intensity decreased. Based on the overlap of the spectra peaks, the negligible peak shift between the series indicates that species in the system are not reacting to form optically active contaminants that would measurably complicate the results. We also note the presence of a blue shifted shoulder on the primary fluorescence peak and a small secondary peak that is also blue shifted from the primary peak. We are unsure about the cause of these features and they warrant future experiments to explore. Figure 2 illustrates the effect of different nitric acid concentrations on fluorescence levels. The stern volmer equation, which compares the quantum yields of fluorescence measured with and without the quenching agent, is plotted here. In this case, the quantum yield accounts for the extent of de-excitation events that result from fluorescence. Figure 3 illustrates the debye huckel equation for the data we obtained. It shows the linear relationship between fluorescence rate constants and ionic strength of solution. From this graph, we extrapolate a y-intercept and further calculate the value of quenching rate at zero ionic strength to be 44.2298 per nanosecond. We found that as ionic strength increases, the quenching rate constant decreases. This dependence is indicative of a collisional dynamic quenching mechanism. If this were another type of mechanism, we would not see as much dependence on ionic strength. The reason for the rate dependence is most likely due to the kinetic salt effect, which explains that there is a kinetically favored formation of higher charges through a denser ionic atmosphere and stronger molecular atmospheric interactions. Also, because counterions are not present to interact with the electron cloud, the formation of quinine ion is most favorable in high concentration of positive spectator ions. We presume that the biggest error in our experiment came from the influence of nitric acid. Because the concentration of nitric acid was significantly larger than the bromide ion quencher concentration, there was an increased chance of bromide ion protonation. This would result in decreased bromide ion concentration, which would in turn decrease quenching and distort the Debye-Huckel plot. This would have also resulted in the loss 
of positive sodium spectator ion that favors quinine dication stability through the kinetic salt effect. We think that these errors are the reason that our numerical constant, which turned out to be 1.61, deviated from the given numerical constant of 1.16. In our experiment, we directly observed the effects of the ionic strength of a solution on the quenching rate of fluorescing quinine. From the emission peak maxima, we were able to plot the debye huckel and Stern-Volmer plots, which allowed us to calculate quenching rate constants and deduce a quenching mechanism. We found that the quenching of quinine fluorescence by bromide is a dynamic process because the quenching rate constant decreased with increasing ionic strength. The extended debye huckel model is applicable to this study. Here you will see our A value matches closely with the literature estimation of 1.16 and our calculated quenching rate in a solution of negligible ionic strength to be 44.2298 per nanosecond. In the future, we would repeat this experiment with different quenchers such as chloride and iodide. We would also perform these experiments with a 405 nanometer diode laser and compare the results. Performing more trials with the different quenchers and lasers would further prove useful. Because this experiment features a dynamic quenching process, it would be insightful to see what data looks like when fluorescence quenching via a static mechanism is observed.